Hey psychology enthusiasts, today, we delve into the fascinating world of measurement and understanding. How do we assess and explore the human mind? Buckle up, because we're contrasting two powerhouse approaches, psychometric and information processing. Imagine the mind as a complex machine. The psychometric approach examines its outputs, test scores, behavior patterns, to understand its overall function. Think IQ tests measuring intelligence or personality inventories revealing traits. But the information processing approach goes deeper. It's like peering into the machine itself, analyzing how different parts work together. It focuses on the internal processes we use to think, solve problems, and make decisions. Imagine studying memory pathways or how we learn new skills. Hold on, it's not a competition. Both approaches are valuable tools. Psychometrics offers quick, standardized insights, while information processing delves into the intricate workings of the mind. Remember, human behavior is complex. Different situations call for different tools. Understanding both approaches helps us paint a more complete picture of who we are. We saw how these approaches measure abilities to understand how intelligence works, but what are the key theories behind these measurements? First up, Alfred Bennett, the AUG of intelligence testing. He believed intelligence boils down to one core factor, a G factor, of general mental ability. Think problem-solving skills, reasoning, and memory, all playing together. Then came Charles Spearman, who said, hold on, Bennett, what about specific skills? He proposed a two-factor theory, a G factor for general intelligence, but also S factors for specific abilities like language or math like having a toolbox with both a universal wrench and specialized tools. Enter Lewis Thurstone and his primary mental abilities. He argued for seven distinct skills, like remembering things or seeing patterns, each contributing to your overall intelligence. Verbal comprehension. Understanding the meaning of words, concepts, and ideas, think reading comprehension, vocabulary building. Numerical ability. Speed and accuracy in working with numbers, think calculations, solving math problems. Spatial relations. Visualizing patterns and forms, think mentally rotating objects, solving spatial puzzles. Perceptual speed, quickly and accurately perceiving details, think spotting differences between images, scanning text efficiently. Word fluency, generating words rapidly and flexibly, think coming up with synonyms, brainstorming ideas. Memory, accurately recalling information, think remembering names, dates, facts. Reasoning, deriving logical conclusions from presented information, think solving puzzles, making decisions based on evidence. Imagine an orchestra where each instrument adds its unique voice to the symphony. Arthur Jensen took things a step further with his hierarchical model. He suggested intelligence works on two levels. Level 1. Basic skills like memorizing facts, like the building blocks of learning. Level 2. Advanced skills like reasoning and complex problem solving, building upon the foundation of level 1. And finally, J.P. Guilford created a massive structure of intellect model. Think of it as a mind map. He identified different ways we operate, think, remember, evaluate, different types of content we work with, words, numbers, emotions, and the various products we create, solutions, ideas, classifications. So, while each theorist had their unique perspective, they all contributed to understanding intelligence through psychometric tests. The above-mentioned theories are representations of psychometric approach to understand intelligent behavior. Which theory resonates most with you? Share your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned for the next episode where we'll explore other approaches to understanding intelligence beyond tests alone. See you there.